So far away, Lucas, what are we talking about today? We're going to be talking about the second generation of Pokemon games. Cross promotion, y'all. Cross promotion. So Lucas, as you often do, would you like to let the lovely audience at home know what we're talking about on this episode of Wikipedia Weekends? Ugh, a big nice sip of tea while you do that. <laughs> yeah, so today we are going to be talking about Pokemon Gold and Silver, and I'm sure the third release in the series, Pokemon Crystal, will also come in there. Yes, and would you like to tell people why we're talking about Pokemon Gold and Silver on this episode? Uh, yes, because me and you are playing through Pokemon Soul Silver on my gaming channel. Because yeah, I tell everyone who works on the channel, if you want to promote your stuff, you can. And Lucas is the first one to come up, let's make an entire video about it. <laughs> so, uh, we'll start as we often do at the beginning. We're referring to, for this Wikipedia Weekends, the Wikipedia page on Pokemon Gold and Silver. So without further ado, Pokemon Gold version and Pokemon Silver version. Oh yeah, they are called that, aren't they? Yeah. The ver like Pokemon Gold version. Um, they are. A role playing video game developed by Game Freak and published by Nintendo for the Game Boy and Game Boy Color. They are the first installments in the second generation of the Pokemon video game series. They were released in Japan in 1999, in Australia and North America in 2000, and in Europe one year later in 2001. Uh, Pokemon Crystal, an enhanced version, was released roughly a year later in each region. In 2009, on the 10th anniversary of the games, Game Freak remade Gold and Silver for the Nintendo DS as Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver, which two large dicked heroes on the internet are currently playing on a gaming channel. You can find a link below. <laughs> so, Lucas, as we often do, thoughts on Pokemon Gold and Silver? Um, it's still potentially my favourite generation of Pokemon. Oh, okay. Controversial statement from Lucas there. Are you sure you're not a Gen 1-er? Uh, I'm definitely not a Gen 1-er. I will tell you you're not, that. You're not a Gen 1-er. Do you not like it? The first generation when Pokemon was completely broken and nothing worked. <laughs> and like the most powerful Pokemon in the game was Tauros and Alakazam. Yeah. Because like, the special system was completely, un utterly fucking broken. It was. And if you're wondering what we're talking about, yeah, the first genera generation of Pokemon was famously broken. And I think nothing sums that up more than the move Focus Energy, which um, is supposed to increase the Pokemon using its chance of scoring a critical hit. But in Pokemon Red and Blue, for whatever reason, actually reduced your chance of getting a critical hit <laughs> to zero for no particular reason. It did the exact opposite thing of what it told you it would do. Yeah, and then there's a load of other stuff that's uh, too complicated and boring to get into now, but mm -hmm. uh, I think, have we mentioned before, like, that old criticism, like those Gen 1 fans that sort of like, oh man, the Pokemon designs today are so lazy. I wish they could go back to what they were back in Generation 1 when they were yeah. good, like Pile of Muck or a Snake or some eggs. But anyway, the introduction continues. The game introduces 100 new species of Pokemon and follows the progress of the central character whose name the player may choose. Both games are independent of each other, but feature largely the same plot while both can be played separately. It is necessary to trade between these games and their predecessors in order to fully complete the game's Pokedex. Oh, remember when that was a thing? I mean, it basically still is now. I can't believe yeah. they still get away with selling two versions of basically the same game. Oh, it's great, isn't it? What my favourite thing about it, though, is, isn't it in Japan, um, gotta catch them all isn't a thing? Wait, really? Yeah, gotta catch them all. Like, you can look this up when you edit the video, but uh, in, I believe in Japan, gotta catch them all is not a thing to do with Pokemon. It's something uh, they came up with a Western adaptation, which is why Japanese fans don't get why American fans are so pissed off they can't have all the Pokemon, because it's never been a thing. It's just catch the ones you want. Oh, wow. Like, completing the Pokedex has never really been the point of the games in Japan. <laughs> like, gotta catch up is not a thing over there. But over here, it's the main point. Yeah, and like the amount of salty ass people like, what do you mean I can't complete my Pokedex? What do you mean I can't have the 50 different bird types that all have the exact same <laughs> stats and look shit? Anyway, the introduction continues. Pokemon Gold and Silver were critically acclaimed upon release. They are considered by some to be the best games of the entire series. Uh, Lucas included, it would seem, yeah. as well as some of the fifth generation of console gaming's most significant titles. They continued the enormous success of Pokemon Red and Blue as Pokemon began to form into, and I quote, a multi-billion dollar enterprise. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I, I can see that. No one needs to know about the gameplay specifically of Pokemon, but 
Let's go on to the subheading of gameplay, which is simply new features. While Pokemon Gold and Silver retains the basic mechanics of capturing, battling, and evolving Pokemon introduced in Red and Blue, new features were added. So Lucas, I'm going to go through these features and you tell me which ones of them were later removed in, in games. Okay. So we have here, a time system was introduced using a real-time internal clock that keeps track of the current time and day of the week. Uh, so that one was taken out for a while and then put back in and taken out and put back in and it's now in the game. But you can mess around with the Switch's internal clock and just make it whatever time you want. You can literally <laughs> yeah. make it rain whenever you want in Pokemon by just changing the time. So yeah, yeah that was taken out. I also like as well where um, that internal battery only lasted 10 years. I know I'm saying only lasted 10 years because Pokemon is a franchise that's popular to this day and those games are still played to this day. Go check out Lucas' channel, see us doing that exact thing. <laughs> and like, after a while, that battery dies, meaning the game can no longer be played because it requires that internal clock which led to a cottage industry of people who would perform surgery on your Pokemon <laughs> Gold and Silver cards to replace the battery. Yeah, so um, I've not done this this surgery, but I remember I had a complete Pokedex, including like Mew and Celebi, on mm. Pokemon Crystal. And one day I just went, you know what? Let's go back and revisit this game. Turned it on and it was like, what do you mean? I've got no save file. <laughs> oh, 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 no! Yeah. Oh, lost it in the zoo. So you have to perform, like you have to open up the cartridge and replace the battery. And I think only Nintendo have this problem of, oh, this thing that you made literally over a decade plus ago isn't working anymore, fix it. Yeah. Because you have like, what is it, GameCube controllers are still used today on the Switch. Mm-hmm. Like, how many generations so we've had? The GameCube, then the Wii. Then there was the Wii U, and then the Switch. Yeah, so that's... So there's like... two entire generations of consoles between like, the GameCube and the Switch, and Nintendo still get complained at for, like, you know, make more GameCube controllers. And that might not sound Crazy. like much, but that's, like, 19 years. Yeah, 20 fucking years later. <laughs> what do you mean my GameCube controller doesn't work anymore? You've had it for 20 years! <laughs> what other consumer device can you even expect to last... Like, to still be, like... Functional at that point, let alone be able to function with a degree of um, accuracy and finesse as a GameCube would draw. Anyway, uh, new items were added with some design to exploit a new mechanic, Pokemon being able to hold items. So that's still in the game, yes? Uh, yeah, that's a yeah. big mechanic in the games nowadays. A new type of item able to be held was the berry. So that's still introduced, yes? Uh, uh, yes, still there. yeah, that is, yeah. I, I know that they are, but just for people who are wondering. More specialised Pokeballs were introduced, which make Pokemon catching easier in certain situations. So that's still a mechanic, yes? Uh, yes, that is, and that's actually like been expanded upon over time, and there's like a cavalcade of Pokeballs you can collect. Yeah, and it's I'm not sure if you do this, Lucas, but I like to make sure that my main team that I have all have different Pokeballs. I like to try to do so, that, yeah. So I will go out of my way to ensure, even if like, like using like a heavy ball, I'll use it to catch something maybe it's not designed to catch, just so I can have that unique Pokeball. <laughs> yeah. So when you go to the Pokemon Center and they put them all up, it's like, yeah, look at my fucking collection of Pokeballs. <laughs> that sounds super fucking lame, and I'll admit that it is, but it <laughs> makes me happy when I see it. Yes. Yeah. It's like, oh, that is there anything more baller, though, than catching just a regular Pokemon in a Master Ball? <laughs> yeah. like, there's nothing more baller than that, is there? Like, I'm going to send out my fucking Pidgey in its Master Ball. Oh, God. Like, that, like, because you know, like, inside the Pokeball is where the Pokemon live. Like, Master Ball is like a fucking mansion. Like, like, <laughs> Probably, the penthouse yeah. suite of Pokeballs. It's like, yeah, these Pidgeys live in large. This live in large Pidgey, man, it's going well. A new item called a Poker Gear was introduced to function as a watch, map, radio, and phone, allowing the player to call other characters who offer their phone number. So that was immediately taken out, right? Um, yeah, it's like, again, one of those things that they've had kind of replacements for in future titles, but, I mean, they essentially gave you a fucking smartphone in 2000. Yeah, and the thing I liked about that, though, is that people would call you for a rematch. Yeah. And I like the idea that you can rematch other Pokemon trainers. It makes sense in that world of, oh, yeah, I went and trained and got stronger and they have new Pokemon. And they took that out. They did. All the things to take out, why take out the thing that makes the game a constant challenge? <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Damn it, Pokemon. Yeah, it says here that trainers will call for a rematch and others will call out rare Pokemon that can be caught in certain areas. It's like, so they'll call you and give the pro tips. Yeah. Like, yo, rare Pokemon out right now, come get them. 
Yeah, and that was like really fucking useful when you didn't just have an entire website dedicated to telling you every single Pokemon and where you can catch them. Yeah, it was nice that it was like contextualized within the game. Anyway, we move on. It says the game also introduced a new Pokemon, um, Raikou. Is it Entei or Entei? I always say Entei. And then here's the one that I always mess up. Suicune or Suicune? I say Suicune. Suicune. You know what? Someone's complaining about either one of yep. them, so it doesn't matter. Um, in addition, there is a possibility of encountering a shiny Pokemon. So that's a feature that's definitely still in the games. Uh, other new features include new Pokemon types that were Steel type and a Dark type. Still in the game, yes? Uh, yeah, they are. And they were very needed um, changes to the game at the time because we mentioned how powerful Alakazam was and just the psychics in general. Psychic type. So the easy way to start with psychic type was the most prevalent and powerful type in Gen 1 because its only weakness was bug type and ghost type moves. The only bug type move in the game that did any damage was like twin needle, which did 40 damage. <laughs> yeah. And then another one, then lick, which was a ghost type with like 20 damage. So they basically the, had nothing that could do super yeah. effective damage against them. Nothing could hurt psychic types, making them basically indestructible. And this is here there. So also as well, the introduction of Pokemon breeding. Oh God. Oh yeah. That's still in the game. That most oh, certainly God. is. It's like, how bad was it though, when you take your Pokemon to breed it and then they'd level it up and they'd say, oh, it learned a new move. We got rid of your best move. It's like, no! <laughs> like, do you know what they should have introduced for that? The option to slap the fucking daycare man. <laughs> your Pokemon learned a new move and I didn't say no. I was like, fuck you. Oh, Getting rid of my fucking hyper being, you bitch. Damn it. So um, that's the new features introduced. So there's a couple of ones, but like, yeah, Pokemon is really bad for like introducing new features and then immediately taking them away. Hello, Z moves and Mega Evolutions. Okay, so development gold and silver were first publicly showcased at the 1997 Nintendo Space World Expo in Japan, becoming the most popular exhibit at the program. Yeah, no shit. <laughs> new Pokemon game caused big hype. Uda thunk it. The new titles were announced to be more than a small upgrade to Pokemon Red and Blue. Instead, they would feature a new storyline, new world, new species of Pokemon. They were designed for the Game Boy Color, allowing them full color support and more detailed sprites. Other additions shown included the held items, the in-game gadgets, backwards compatibility with previous games in the series. And have you, um, sorry, have you seen like images and features from like that 1997 demo where it was so different? Uh, I have not, so. Lucas, explain. Um, so there's just basically um, images and leaks that came out only a couple of years ago that were the beta of Pokemon Gold and Silver. And there was genuine, like, massive changes in um, Pokemon designs, including Pokemon that just straight up weren't in the final game. Yeah, I've heard there's a lot of lost Pokemon. Like, there's mm -hmm. even a... Um... A really great Twitter page dedicates like here a lost Pokemon that no longer exists. <laughs> like here ones that like, were left on the cutting room floor as it were. So we have here during an ABC interview, President of Creatures Inc. Oh fuck's sake, um, Sune Kazu Ishihara. I hope I got that correctly. Gave insight into the brainstorming process for developing new Pokemon species. So I'm actually intrigued about this myself. So let's go straight on. Yeah. Um, he explained the ideas for each of these monsters came from the imaginations of the software developers at Game Freak, who got these ideas from their childhood experiences, including from reading manga, the names for Japanese comic books, ideas came from scary experiences they had as kids, catching insects and so forth. So from these experiences in childhood, these ideas for Pokemon came out. And that's like a really famous thing about Pokemon, it's famously inspired by the original creator habit of a kid of catching and cataloging insects. Yeah, he was just a genuine bug catcher and wanted to recreate the feeling and experience of that in a video game. And then finding and being excited to find something new and interesting mm -hmm. and then capturing it and then see, and then learning all about it and then watching it grow and um, uh, function and just studying it basically. So yeah, huge nerd resulted in Pokemon and news I know, I know. <laughs> and then that quote about them being inspired by childhood experiences reminds me of that really famous story from Shigeru Miyamoto where chain chomps in Mario were directly inspired by just a big ass dog that would chase him as a kid. Yeah. So people wondering, like, chain chomps in Mario, like, these really super aggressive giant balls, like, literal balls of teeth made of iron, um, who will constantly try and chomp at Mario's ass. Um, inspired by just a big dog on a chain that scared the shit out of me and <laughs> as a kid. And I love stuff like that, it's great. 
And then some other stuff about various things I did to promote the game in the lead up to its release. But the only thing that matters about the development is this one bit here, and that is programmer Shigeki Morimoto stated that part of why development took three and a half years was due to being a small team of only four programmers. Enter big dick legend Satoru Iwata, <laughs> then the president of HAL Laboratory, who would later become Nintendo's CEO, who, I'm, I'm going to paraphrase here, swaggered in like a badass <laughs> and compressed the Pokemon graphic code, which allowed them to include the entire Kanto region from the original games. Man. Which is a actual, like, which is one of those things that, it's a legend in the intro, like, there's no fucking way he did it. And Lucas, like, do you want to just like, like uh, give like the backstory to this? Because it's a fucking incredible story. I mean, yeah, it was just essentially that Iwata was such a good programmer that he was just, man, I'm going to optimise the shit out of your game code. And there was very, very limited space on, like, Game Boy cartridges back in the day. Yeah. But he right, just actually. noticed, man, I've made this code so efficient, I can put the entire previous game in this game as well. Yeah, and there's a couple of stories like that with Pokemon where that's the reason Mew exists. Because one of the guys making Pokemon noticed there was just enough space to add a single extra Pokemon, so he mm -hmm. put Mew into the game. And apparently, um, there was no like idea that Mew was in the code when they released the game. No, they didn't. They just put references into it. Yeah. Which is why um, Mew comes after Mewtwo in the Pokedex. Despite, so it was just kind obviously. of shoved in there. Literally added in after the fact, and there was yeah. the guy added. He added Mew, but then added no way to get it. It's like what a yeah. fucking baller! Because that drove so many kids mad. I respect it. And Lucas, we have three final things we can move on to. We have release, reception, and legacy. So what would you like to cover finally? Let's finish off with just the legacy of these games. The legacy of Pokemon Gold and Silver. Okay, so remakes. Um, Pokemon Heart Gold version, Pokemon Soul Silver version, are enhanced remakes of Pokemon Gold and Silver, developed by Game Freak and published by the Pokemon Company um, for Nintendo, for the Nintendo DS. First released in Japan in 2009. Okay, yeah, sure. I, those, I never played those. I'm going to, apparently. Game director Shigeki Morimoto aimed to respect the feelings of those who played the previous games, while also ensuring that it felt like a new game to those that were introduced to the series in more recent years. And then it just says that it sold a shit ton of copies. I mean, that does sound like Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, I like that. What's its legacy? Oh, they remade it and it continued to just dominate. <laughs> That's a legacy, all right. Yeah, that really wasn't much of a legacy of the original games, but you know what? Fuck it, they're great. Yeah, its legacy is they release another game that's literally just that game, but a little bit better, and it also sold 10 million copies. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Fucking Pokemon's popular, who'd have thunk it? 